Welcome to the market report for this coming week with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is January 20th, 2020. There's 2020 2020 there. So, Miss Vegas? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Market's closed. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So, we're going to prepare you guys for the week ahead. Uh, before we get started, uh, we did mention in one of our videos that we are looking to improve the content that we provide to help you guys with your trading and plan for your trades. So we have added a new feature on our website. Please check it out, ilovestocks.com. We have an opportunity for you to sign up for your free weekly watch list. All you got to do is put your name, your email, click sign me up. And then you'll get an email confirmation sent to you. And then you'll need to confirm that you've requested to be on the list. And we will start sending this out next Sunday. And the picks that will be on that list will be totally separate from the content from the video. So please sign up. This will be a totally free watch list. Okay, so on to the watch list. We're going to talk about ABIS, Boeing, Apple, ACHV, NIO, and Tesla. So we are going to start with ABUS. And you know, ABUS is um, one of those penny plays. It's called Arpitus Biopharma. It is a pharmaceutical company. They're in the biotech. Um, but the reason I really like it is that if you look at the weekly chart, you can see that it had a nice close on Friday. There is a lot of range contraction on the stock. And it also had an inside day earlier during the week. And I'm actually looking at this stock for a continuation. So it's, it, you know, has room to move more. Jim's going to talk about supports and resistances, but definitely like this would be a stock that I would be swing trading. And so I don't have a position at this time. I will definitely be looking at this tomorrow and look to see how it opens and then take a look to see if I'm going to take that swing trade. So, Jim, um, let's talk about that chart from ABUS. All right, here's ABUS on the yearly chart. Let's pull up a three-year and see what a three-year is telling us right here on a three-year weekly chart. So, it, on a weekly chart on three-year, we were up running up here at 1260, and she pulled back to 82 cents. So, we're going to pull up the yearly now and start drawing a few trend lines where I think this stock I kind of like the yearly chart we did kind of touch up to the yearly pivot point and that was right at 345 it did close at 307 it did have a little bit of resistance right up in this area right around the 319 320 area and I'm gonna pull that up here on day on the um, 20 day in a second I'm just trying to draw me another little pullback support at 288 then we've got some resistances on up here. It seems to me like about a three, 353 area, somewhere right around in there. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit to right around the 362. Then we've got another one right up in here. Now we'll just go ahead and pull out the 20 day now. Trying to find little places where it's consolidated, pull back, found some kind of support or resistance we did have some down here right around the 244 area but we've been in a little channel here for the last couple of weeks the resistance that we do need to break is going to be this 321 if we can get past that we got another resistance right up here right around the 350 area so if we can break that we're going to go to 362 let's see if i can find one more little support area and i think that's right down here right around the 356 I'm gonna change that I didn't like that right there right at 356 I've got one right here 372 so we got a little pivot point little pullback hard support at 288 then you have three of them right below it so that's gonna be your first support your low supports right here at 244 the resistance to break is going to be somewhere right around this 321 area. And if we can do that, bring it up to 350, then we've got a hard resistance at 362 to 366. And that's going to be Avis, and I like it. I really do. I like that yearly chart. Another one's a very popular stock that we've been talking about, and that's going to be Boeing. Oh, my goodness, yes. So we have to talk about Boeing because you know what? 
Uh, Boeing had some, you know, news on Friday even that, you know, they're obviously uh, more investigations about the software for the 737 MAX. And not only that, but, um, you know, there was also a documentary last night on the Fifth Estate. And I'll actually put the link in our YouTube video if you want to check it out. Uh, but the documentary was just really showcasing, I guess, all the challenges with the 737 MAX and, um, you know, the issues with how the management team did a really poor job with making the decision to first of all ground those jets when the incident happened and also with regards to how they're handling the uh, training and uh, the software updates so um, that was showcased last night on the fifth estate so you have to anticipate that potentially tomorrow there could be a little bit of a downtick on boeing so hard to say because you know boeing's one of those stocks i we've seen it where sometimes it has bad news and the stock does not pull back or it has good news and the stock pulls back. So it really is a bit tricky to trade, but I guess, you know, bottom line is trade the trend and trade what's in front of you. So, um, you know, can't be guessing how it's going to act tomorrow, but maybe it can pull back based on how it, that downtick happened on Friday at the close. So can this gap up tomorrow? I don't really know. Um, it's just going to have to see how the market really does react. Um, so Jim, what are your thoughts on the Boeing chart? Because, you know, uh, with everything going on, it's really had a really hard time to, to ever recover and go back over that 346 line. So what are your thoughts on what you're currently seeing on Boeing and what can we anticipate in terms of supports and resistances? Well, we it sure did react Friday. That or the last day of the that the market was open. You can tell how it pulled back to that 323 area, and just about a week and a half ago, it was up or running right around 344.19. So I kind of want to erase all this. I'm going to pull up that yearly chart. Just look at something real fast. Yeah, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So we're, we've kind of puttered down here to a triple bottom area, and that low is right around this 319.55. So that's kind of should be your first target of that that support area. It, I mean, it needs to hold that. We touched it once before, right back in here on this date, and that was back on the end of last year, December 17th. So we should pull back to that same support area, and I'm going to kind of just red flag this right here that support area right around the 32040 area that's what needs to hold we did have a low at 31955 so let me see here right right there 32030 that next one's right here at the 322 bam 32293 area We'll magnify this back up. We're just trying to find some support areas where we think it needs to hold and first one it needs to break. And that first one it needs to break is going to be at 322.93 area. And then if it goes down to 320.30, and that's going to be where it, the really the, the what I say the rubber hits the road. If it doesn't hold that and breaks on down, we could start looking at maybe 310 or some even predicted down near 300. 300. And that's going to be on Boeing. So the resistance, and that's going to be right up here, right around the 327. I was hollering out in the room anything under 30. But we can tell that did not hold last week. So we got one more right in here. I'm going to go ahead and get this little spot right here and see if I can find it. It's going to be right there at that 330.92 area. I don't think that's going to work either. So let's pull up the 20 day. You can tell it had a pretty nasty day there. Last close, pulled down to, to that 323 area. We do find some support level right here at 324.07. And then we, our next one's going to be right up right around here, right around the 325.30. And that's what it needs to break. So your low support, 320, the low low, 320.30, 320, 
Your first one that needs to hold is going to be at 322.93. The resistance that it needs to break is going to be at 325.30 and run it up to that 327.04. And then maybe, maybe you can get it back up in here, back up into this 328 area. And that's where I think it's going to go. 328, and that's going to be a real hard resistance. But for right now, you know, it depends on which way the which way the, the trend goes. That's going to be Boeing. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be another one that's been getting kind of fun to play, and that's going to be Apple. Miss Vegas? Yeah. So, you know, Jim, if you go to the Apple website, I just sent you a link there, Yeah. apple.com, you'll actually notice that uh, they've actually replaced their home page today. Uh, honoring Martin Luther King Jr. So I love the quote that they've put, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly today and every day, the, honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we see that, uh, you know, Tim Cook has replaced the regular homepage on the website with a full screen tribute to civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he actually tweeted that quote, which is actually on Apple's official website. And um, I think that's great. I And, you know, I'd love to see an executive like him that, you know, honors, uh, you know, amazing leaders of freedom. And I think that is really, really awesome of Apple. Um, but going back to Apple in general, uh, going back to the actual stock, um, you know, the actual company, I mean, you could see that the stock is still bullish. Um, you know, there is some chatter also on Apple that they're going to be, you know, in 2020 showcasing some new phones. Um, apparently, they're going to be uh, seven new iPhones and apparently some very ambitious upgrades that they're coming to showcase. Apparently, they even have an Apple iPhone 12 and, you know, details on what that phone is going to have uh, remains to be heard or seen but apparently a lot more stuff coming from apple don't forget um that you know apple also has um you know they're going to be increasing the prices because don't forget they're going to have the addition of the 5g apparently you know the price will be increased will be very small uh however you know what um you know people are going to be calling you know people are calling this right now the apple iphone 12 um, and 5G is really far from the only thing to be excited about. So we'll see what this is going to bring people. I mean, obviously, the 3D camera is going to have the first 120 HD iPhone promotion display. Uh, you know, we'll see what, what it's going to do. So stay tuned for something like that. But, you know, Apple's just super bullish, just trading the trend. The trend is your friend. And Jim can tell you all about that because... You know, Apple Friday had a pullback, and then you know what? High of day came around and made new 52-week highs, Jim. I mean, this stock has absolutely been nonstop, nonstop since, you know, September of 2019. I mean, it's had its moments of pullbacks, but you know what? Very little pullbacks. It's just going higher and higher and higher. So back in September, if you remember, the stock was, you know, close to around 210. And look where it is now, $100 plus, um, you know, we're only in January. So what a move it's had in such a short amount of time. So, Jim, let's hear about Apple because I know you love Apple. Oh, I love Apple. I love Apple. I love Apple. I love Tesla. I love Bind. There's all kinds. I love Nile. I love stocks, but <laughs> so on the three-year chart alone, we were down here at 120, 119.50, and it ran all the way up to 318. I pull up a, um, that's a three-year, so I pull up a one-year, well, that's a one-month. Let me get up through to the one-year, one-year daily. We were down here, we're up 100% from 151.70 all the way to 318.74. So people just kind of getting a little bit of, a little bit of jitters, man. This thing keeps going and going and going, and momentum keeps bringing it up. We keep breaking out of these ascending triangles, and that last one is even. We had two of them in the past two weeks. We had one right in here, then we had another one right in here, and then we broke out again Friday, or the last trading, which was Friday, 
right around that 318.74 area. So let's pull up this 20 day, see if we can make any sense out of it. Right, let's say support level is going to be right here, right around that 312 if it decides to pull back. We're kind of in a little channel, a double top, right here at the 318.80 area. So that's where I'm going to go ahead and draw that little trend line of resistance. That's what we need to break. It did kind of run up with an ascending triangle on it here in the past week. I'm going to take a sip. A little drink, water, coffee. We got a little support level right here at 315.46. So that's kind of a little, little channel. We have a little support level. It's going to be right down here between that no lower than that 311 and that's where we want to try to keep it and then we want to try to break that resistance level at 318.80. I kind of follow the trend on it. We are in an ascending triangle with a double top. It could pull back one more time and create a little channel this week. We do have four trading days in the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and so the resistance that we do need to break is going to be that 318.80. And then that 311 has got to hold. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, ACHV. Yes. So on ACHV, this one here, I'm liking it. It looks like it's setting up for a nice swing trade. It had news. It's a Canadian company as well. Um, you know, they are um, have some sort of partnership too. You know, they're using, first of all, the University of Bristol and Oracle. And, um, you know, what they've done is they have a study that they're using Oracle's high performance cloud infrastructure to help them improve the speed of drug discovery and also the development of new treatments. And what they did share, uh, they did publish an article about the um, signals of uh, nicotinic um, receptors, and that was published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society magazine. However, what they wanted to mention in this press release too was the results of the study, but they wanted to mention that um, they were able to get, to take this data and put it into what they call the high cloud infrastructure. And basically they were able to take that information, the computations, that they mentioned would have taken many months to complete, they were able to achieve that in five days using Oracle's high performance cloud infrastructure. So they mentioned that the speed of these results have represented a breakthrough in the computational chemistry and is actually transformational from a, ver a research perspective. So I think that's actually good news to help them speed up getting data and getting results. And uh, remember, this company, you know, Achieve Life Sciences did have an offering at one time back in December. They almost had like two of them, but uh, pretty much back to back, but they've actually closed them off. Uh, so that's good that those offerings are closed. Um, and what this company is doing, they're trying to understand why nicotine is so addictive and to develop molecules to help people quit smoking. And, um, you know, they want to understand how it affects also the nervous system. So what they're doing is they're saying that by harnessing the power of cloud computing, they can actually observe very quickly how nicotine exerts its effects on the at the molecular level and that the information can inform future, this is important, future drug development of new treatments for companies like Achieve Life Sciences. So you remember they have partnered with the University of Bristol to help them formulate the molecules and the potential treatments to help combat, you know, this is considered an addiction and a neurological disorder. Um, so you know what, they're working together. And I think this is really good news that Oracle has this kind of high performance cloud infrastructure that can really speed up uh, analyzing this uh, computations uh, from a, you know, uh, I guess a biochemical uh, perspective. So I think that's really good. Um, so stay tuned for more information on how that's developing, but that was, you know, the press release and uh, really liked this actual stock. I saw that a pocket pivot, we saw volume surge and um, 
you know, there will be some resistances obviously on the way here on this actual stock, but definitely keep it on your watch list because it's kind of looking ready for a swing trade position to take a starter. Um, so Jim, I'll turn it over to you and love to hear what you have to think about that chart. Yeah, well, I'm looking at the uh, 20 day right now. I'm just drawing a little resistance line at 66.36, but I want to pull up the yearly chart first. It, like it did say, it did have a couple offerings there just a little bit ago, so it has a little bit of money the hard way. We had time to, for that to soak in and, and kind of rest a little bit, but on a yearly chart, we did have a yearly high of 463, and it has pulled all the way back here to 464, so it kind of, within a penny there, it kind of is a little pun. But we're down here at 46 cents, and we bounced up off it with a little bit of green on this TTM. And I'm going to draw a little another resistance line, which is almost here where that gap was. That's about where that 66.36 was on the 20-day. Could have been a little bit higher, maybe right around this this area right in here, right around the 69 something. But the next one we need to get to is going to be that 83.38. That's going to be your hard, hard resistance to start filling in that gap. So that's, then we've got another one right after it that we're going to call right at the beast of this last candle, that big red one, which kind of melts up into it right under a buck, 98.37. So let's pull up this 20 day and see if we can see anything that we missed or what we need to add. Support level, no lower needs to hold has got to be this 55 57 somewhere in that area let's go ahead and make it that 55 57 and that first one's going to be right down here and first part of support is going to be at 59 74 with the resist well let me get that back down here 59 60 we'll just at 59 74 yep right in there then we got another one right here at 60, about right at 64, and it's got to break that resistance of 66.36 to get up to new highs. That's going to be a hard resistance right in there in that 66.67 area. If we can break that, we're going to bring it up to 83.38 and bring it right under a buck. Low support, 55.57 has to hold. And it can drop down a little bit down here. That might be your oversold area, right around the 50, 51, 50 cent area. If you can get down in there, 47, they might start your little small position and swing it on up to this channel. But see, we've had higher highs. We did have a double top, triple top breakout on a Friday, and we are setting up an ascending triangle. So it is kind of setting up for to break that 66.36. You can bring it up to 83, and that's going to be ACHV. And the next one we talked about before, we're going to talk about again. That's Nile. Yes. So you know, Nile is the China's troubled Tesla rival. Yep. I mean, you know, they had their earnings, and they kind of gave a little bit of hope to you know when they did report some improved car sales and revenue. But the thing is, this electric car maker is still bleeding very heavily. A lot of cash burn. Uh, they have a lot of problems <clears throat> um, finding more cash. And, um, you know, they've actually lost $1.2 billion so far, uh, you know, in 2019, which is a huge cash problem. Um, the other thing, too, that's kind of, you know, been kind of rattling the stock, and this is kind of why it had that volume surge and why the stock's had a bit of a run, is that, um, and Jim, I gave you a little article there you could showcase if okay. you want is that they did have um, apparently they're supposed to receive there was a rumor here that they're going to be getting one billion dollars in funding um, which would help them with their cash flow for the rest of 2020. Um, so you know that this company is under a lot of pressure because don't forget Tesla's there and you know Tesla is really hot right now which we're going to talk about next. Um, and, uh, you know, the Chinese government is still supporting the growth for the country's electric car industry, um, but it's no longer putting all its money in one basket. So, you know, the electric vehicle sales have fallen sharply um, because they had turned down some subsidies for purchasers. 
And, um, you know, without subsidies, you know, electric cars remain more expensive than similarly outfitted conventional models. So um, we'll have to see how this goes. Let's see if this money comes through. Again, this is just all, you know, a rumor. Uh, I haven't seen really any confirmation. They Again, the article says they're to uh, receive a billion dollars in funding, but I haven't, we haven't seen an actual official PR that they did get it. But regardless, um, you know, the market's like in this news that they're apparently going to get this money. And uh, we're seeing that the stock has had a beautiful volume surge and the weekly charts actually looking very good, keeping in mind that the company has a lot of cash flow problems. So, you know, again, risky trade to swing trade as well. Um, I hope NIO makes a comeback. I mean, listen, when an IPO, it was it had a really nice run and we actually thought this is going to be a mini Tesla. And uh, it's a shame that it's pulled back like this. Um, so, Jim, over to you to talk to us about your thoughts on NIO and what you're seeing with the chart. Oh, I love, you know, Niall's kind of been a one that I wish I'd have got in here down on the dip when it pulled back. But we are setting up an ascending triangle pattern, and we did break out of that Friday. As I'm kind of drawing up here on the 20 day. You see, we had a low up here right around the 235 with a double bottom, actually showing a little bit more strength on that second touch. And then bam, the TTM came right into play. She bounced up and ran all the way up and had off that great news. And then pulled back and run into that 200. Found a little support level off that trend line. We touched back a couple times with some higher lows. Another sending triangle breakout right here. You see we had that little flat spot right in here. So we're going to draw a little support area. Let's go ahead and get that in here. That's going to be a solid support. We're going to fine tune it right here at 378. That's going to be a nice little support area. And then we've got another one right here. Things we're looking at this 20 day. But that's what you call an ascending triangle breakout. And that happened. So I think this, we need to get it up higher. I got target up here right a little bit above. Right here. Well, first we've got to break this 487. If we can break that 487 right in here. We're going to bust that five, and I bet you that five is really going to be a solid resistance area, and that's going to run up to five to 520. I'll show that here in a second, but I'm going to try to find me another support level. And that's going to be right down here, right around the 410, 412, 413 area. I just have to kind of, it's kind of go between that, between that 410 and that 413, so let's go compromise with the 411. And I'm going to turn that into a real solid support area with a red line that's going to be Nile with that first one down here at 378 411 has to hold strong buy is going to be once it if it can hit this trend line or hit that 200 on 20 day one hour in which right now is running run right around that 380 378 area so the resistance that we got to break is going to be 470 487 let's pull up let's pull up this one year one more time see if we can get past yeah right around that five dollar area then the next resistance is going to be this little gap right up in here and that's going to be right around that 518 right there and I'm seeing that right in this spot right in here right in this area right in here and then we got one more little spot which we can go ahead and make it that 534 but that 5 487 that 518 is going to be the hard channel to break and that's going to be right up in here if we can break that 520 we're going to go up to 534 and then bring it up to that final with 553 is going to be your another hard resistance this is one you're just going to have to follow the trend. It can pull back, but we did break out an ascending triangle out on it Friday. So it's broke that resistance level. And that's going to be Nile. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be its little big brother, and that's Tesla. I like that you said little big brother. 
because yep. <laughs> that is what it is right now. Yep. Um, so we know that, uh, you know, Tesla, you know, it's had its, you know, little action going on this week. But, you know, that weekly chart still showing me that the stock is bullish. Um, you know, a lot of stuff happening. I mean, the Cybertruck is apparently comments here from Electric um, that, you know, it's incredibly cheap to bring this uh, product to production. Uh, you know, this uh, particular truck is going to apparently the numbers are about so there's about $30 million of capital required to establish the production of 50,000 trucks versus $210 million for the Ford F-150. So you can see how Tesla is able to scale expenses and reduce cost in comparison to their competitors. Um, the other thing, too, is they did mention that, um, you know, there's going to be some interesting manufacturing improvements that are also going to go into production before the Tesla Cybertruck. Uh, with regards to the Model Y shares and the parts of the Model 3. Uh, the other thing, too, to comment about, you know, Tesla, you know, they are going to be opening up a plant in Germany, and they plan to have cars in there ready to go by 2021. So not only do they have the Gigafactory 3 located in uh, China, but guess what? They're going to have a Gigafactory 4 in Germany. So Tesla is just not stopping it doesn't matter what people think about elon musk or what they think about the company the company is constantly growing expanding uh setting up new production plants uh obviously they have a wait list of people that want this truck and uh the thing is can they meet the demand because you know the, the demand is there but can sorry can they meet the supply so the thing is um, this is extremely popular and uh, I mean I don't really know how people will park that in a garage because I was reading an article that the cyber trucks don't fit in a standard garage so people would probably have to park this outside or have a, something custom built but anyways nevertheless people have ordered the trucks I actually you know one of our girl traders trader doe she ordered the tesla truck for herself and she's on the wait list as well, but she put her order in and she's excited. So Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on Tesla because we love the trading this one. And I had a rough time trading it last week, did not do as well as I would have liked to. Uh, definitely took losses on it, um, but I will still keep it on my watch because I still like it. And uh, we'll be watching for a better type of entry on my trade. So Jim, let's hear about Tesla. We're, we're bullish. Def you have to have kind of that bullish, bearish attitude about it. We're definitely bullish on the company and what it's going to be like in another four to five years from now. And we're definitely bullish on it with the momentum that it's trading at right now. But I think a lot of these fat cat bears that are coming out, you know, um, for example, Morgan Stanley, uh, Cohen, they're just sorry that they missed the, the boat so they're trying to bring in the tide and they're trying to sink that boat in a little bit and they're trying to bring them stocks down and that's the kind of the way you got to trade this in that kind of bearish uh, attitude but all the time being bullish with it and that's the way I've been playing it so I'm waiting for like the pullbacks we did have a real solid support level right here right around that 493.75 area 492 area now, if that can create a solid support again, you're creating a descending pattern. But for right now, we've had lower highs here on the last three days. And then Friday, it kind of built a little spinning top right there into the last day. So it might have found support level right there at no lower than at 493.75. So that's where I'm going to kind of call it. I think if it does go and break that support level, it'll be pulling back into this 474.70. Uh, 37 area and I'm going to go ahead and draw a trend line right there for a possibly low 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 support if if the floor falls out right here at 493.75 so the resistance now the resistance we got break is going to be have going to be right up to that last resistance on that candle right there so we're going to magnify this up just a little bit we're going to fine tune it we're going to call that just a little resistance area right there, right around the 513.04 area. Somewhere in there. It could be a little bit above, it could be a little bit below. 
but that's probably where it would settle that needs to break up to these higher places and that's going to be this 518 so we're we're, 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 we're got the attitude that we're bullish on it very definitely bullish long term if I had a lot of money I'd have some sitting on the side and then I'd be playing with a small maybe 25 percent of my investment into this one company just scalping it every day and there's your little pullback support right there right around the 497 that's where your next one's going to be so let's pull up this 20 day see if we miss something or something right here we want to go ahead and draw this in you see how hard that is right here where we had that previous high and it pulled back and then found that little support level at 474.37 so that's going to be your low support area I don't want to see it go no lower than that 474 and I don't want to see it go no lower than that 497 now that's going to be that little channel right in there so that's going to be your probably your second support area and that first one's going to be this 504 and we did close at 510 and you notice we had a big knife right into close on the stock resistance to break is going to be this 51304 area and then if you can double top maybe fine tune this right in here that's going to be this resistance level it's going to now change to 51731 so let's pull this to the daily see if I missed anything at 51731 couldn't do that we had a descending pattern right in here kind of more or less maybe even a pennant flag but she failed a symmetrical flag and she failed on that and then she went ahead and tried to found that resistance level so that hard resistance is 513 and we're going to pull up this 20 day chart again and find the support levels that solid support at 497.14 has to hold and then a strong buy at 474.37 is going to be your low low support with a triple bottom resistance to break is going to be this 519 518 area then we can start getting back up here but play it on the pullbacks follow the trend wait until you get the confirmation to get into the trade either way and that's Tesla and then we got one more little bonus one and that's going to be Lucky Coffee LK well, you know what? I'm a huge fan of Starbucks, and I wish they would have Luckin Coffee here, but unfortunately, it's only available in China. But you know what? This coffee giant is not to be overlooked. To me, I've been saying this all over, nonstop, in our chat, in our videos. This is the miniature Starbucks. I will not be shocked to see this catch up to Starbucks. I don't even. I won't even be surprised to see this break the price of what Starbucks trades at. However, Starbucks is still a good company, but I want to mention, you know, Chinese coffee chain, Luckin Coffee, they actually raked in an extra $865 million in net proceeds through two separate fundraising moves that they announced earlier this past month. And they mentioned this actually on Friday. And what they're going to do is they're going to rapidly expand throughout the country. So, you know, people are calling this the Chinese Starbucks um, and that, uh, you know, with their recent IPO, you can see how much growth this has had. Um, you know, the company is the largest coffee chain in China. They have 4,507 stores as of the end of 2019, uh, more than Starbucks. Starbucks has 3,600 outlets in the country. And not only this, but this is what's really interesting. Investors have responded to Lucky, you know, Lucky Coffee's aggressive tactics. I mean, um, they have a newly launched smart unmanned retail, which are like vending machines in compact store footprints, uh, expansion into other consumables, and a very big market leading store count. Now, if you notice the share price of the company, I mean, look where it closed. I mean, $50 and two cents. I mean, that is triple its IPO price of $17. That is just incredible, incredible growth. Um, the nice thing too is that in addition to consolidating their foothold in coffee chain market, 
Uh, the firm is also aggressively growing across the beverage industry. They're now going to be spinning off. This is really important. Spinning off a tea brand, striking a deal to produce fresh juice in partnership with a European food processing company called Louis Dreyfus. And the startup posted narrowed losses showing an improved cost strategy. So you know what? They're going to be now expanding in the tea business. I mean, this is definitely one to watch. Luckin Coffee. We call it Lucky Coffee, but, you know, it, it's Luckin Coffee. You can also see the news article there also from Benzinga that, you know, Luckin is going for the gold in the Chinese market. It is possible for it to become a stronger growth stock than Starbucks. Uh, not to say that Starbucks is not well run. Starbucks is a great company, but the thing is, they're in a totally different place in their growth cycle. And we can see that because look where it was at the IPO. Look where it is today. I mean, I love this stock. And uh, you know what? I actually wish, because I love Starbucks so much that I paid more attention to this when the IPO came out, because that would have been a fantastic investment. Um, unfortunately, I'm trading it really from an option side. Have some shares, but I did not have the shares until the low 30s. Um, which is, you know, late, but at the same time, even if you traded it in the low 30s to where it is today, you've had a nice return. So definitely liking Luckin Coffee, definitely keep it on a watch. Uh, I actually personally like it for long-term holds as well, just because of everything that it's doing. It's also got 52-week highs. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing story. So Jim, let's hear about Luckin Coffee chart because this was your bonus pick. Oh yeah, and this is one that, I noticed when it was under twenty dollars, and I had brought it to Miss Vegas's attention, and I played it one of my very first option trades, and and just think now it's it's more than doubled. It closed at a high of fifty one thirty eight. I mean, it had a high of fifty one thirty eight on Friday, and closed at fifty dollars, and it's kind of setting up with a pennant flag here for Friday, on an hour chart. As you can notice, we had the little down here flag right here and we had the high right there so it's kind of a kind of a pennant flag it might go either way low support no lower than that 49.11 would have to hold that was the old resistance that it broke just i mean it's a beautiful chart just a beautiful chart all the way back from 20 and here we are and i do believe miss vega i think this can take some of that market share away from starbucks there's 330 million cups of coffee people partake partake in every day in the united states just imagine china especially if they add tea to the platform that that's going to be unbelievable so this could go beyond 100 bucks easily lucky coffee and right now the resistance that we do need to break is going to be this 50 let's say this 50 67 area and the pullback support is going to be no lower than that 49 11. So we have 49.11 for low support. Resistance to break is going to be that 50.67, and we're kind of right at a pivot point right now at $50. And that's going to be it for the Sunday's report, which is now Monday's report. We're going to have a short week. And Miss Vegas, do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, I hope everyone has a really good trading week. Uh, you know, I'm really liking a lot of things that we're seeing in the market, still seeing a lot of great opportunities and uh, still a, a nice time of the year to obviously try to make good trades that are going in your favor, obviously green. And uh, we'll see what the market's going to show us tomorrow. And don't forget, please visit our website, subscribe to the new feature. We're going to have a newsletter being released starting next week, which is a separate uh, list of stocks separate from the YouTube videos. It's to help people with swing trade ideas. So if you're interested in that, please don't forget to sign up to get on that list. Absolutely free. So have a great day. Have a great rest of your um, statutory holiday. And uh, we'll definitely see you all tomorrow and have a great trading week. Thank you so much for watching. Please follow, subscribe, smash the like button. Jim, anything else to add? Ah, this is the market report with Vegas and Jim, and let's have a great 2020. And we love stocks. Today's date is January 20th, 2020.